Let's fucking do this, everybody. You have been waiting so long, and now he is here. Our next guest on Pulse of the Maggots from the band 96 Bitter Beings, who have a record coming out on November 4th. It is Darren Miller. Welcome to the program. It took so much to get you here, and you're finally here, man. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> how, how, how are you doing today? Thank you so much. I appreciate yeah. it. I love you guys. Hey, at least we don't have to communicate via, like, cardboard. P yeah, pizza boxes anymore, <laughs> and, like, Sharpies and stuff like that. I know. These are well, words. We might. <laughs> well, Let's not jinx it, it, because, you know, we're not frozen yet. But I actually really admire the fact that we all have the same backdrops. We kind of do. <laughs> yeah, we got the lights going on. Know. We've got He's records behind us, all of them. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, so, Darren, let's kick things off. Yeah. Um, I know that this album, Synergy Restored, has been in the works for years, and now we're just a couple of weeks away from it finally seeing the light of day. What's going through your mind right now? How are you feeling about the record? I'm terrified. <laughs> because of the pandemic, because of how long it took to, to make the, the deal with Nuclear Blast legitimate and signed and you know, make it happen. Um, the album's been done for so many years, but up until the week before we handed it over to Nuclear Blast, I was still fixing shit. I was mm. still obsessed with, okay, this this is the sophomore album. The first album was independently made and distributed by me and, you know, packaged sees in, in in packages in this very room and i would have to go to post the post office and send out hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of cds and vinyl and um nuclear blast saved me from having to do that on this album and now that there's been three singles released and uh nuclear has been more than just to me with um giving uh printing up exclusive vinyl only for the 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 store that 96 bitter being sells all the merch they did 300 copies of black vinyl which is the like audio files choice and then we did picture discs and they gave us they did that just for us and they sent them to me and i went and picked them up and i have them here in the background and i'm excited but i'm also shitting my pants because i got so used to waiting for this album to come out that it is about to and i don't know how to deal with that yet so i'm um, trying to get used to the fact that this is reality this isn't just an album that's sitting for years and not months years it's been sitting for years it's now coming out november 4th like it or not satisfied am i or not it's happening and the, the um the feedback from the three singles that i've gotten so far has been all positive mm -hmm. and i i just can't wait i just can't wait for the album to hit uh, Corey and I are very much looking forward to it as well. Uh, we've spoken to a number of different bands that have been waiting for a really, really long time. In fact, uh, we, we talked to um, the Antichrist Imperium just a couple of weeks ago who said the same thing. They were like, I don't think this is reality. Once it actually comes out, then we'll say it, but I'm not even going, you know, so uh, we're really looking forward yeah. to the album. So you mentioned that you were tinkering with it uh, almost up to right when they had to pry it away from your fingers. What was the approach for this album? Was any different than the first album you did or you, yeah. have you just been doing you know the same thing that you've been doing for years on this album i've been doing the same thing that i've been doing for years since i was 19. when i started with cky i was all about um i gave up on trying to follow trends because it wasn't working and it, uh, people knew immediately when you're a musician and you try to do things that you don't like, audiences know immediately that you do not like what you're doing. And so I decided, okay, I'm obsessed with trying to get a record record deal. Nobody wants to sign my my uh, phony commercial attempts at following trends. I'm just going to do what I fucking want. So that's how CKY came about when I was 19, 20 years old. And because I decided, okay... This is what happens if I just shut up, stop talking to myself, and I, I create. We all created this thing together, this sound happened, and 
it took off. And I didn't know that something like CKY would even be able to happen in a world where metal was just um, alternative rock like Silver Chair or Everclear and stuff like that, or Limp Bizkit, you know. Mm -hmm. But there were bands like Korn that were doing new interesting things, and a lot of bands followed suit, Cold Chamber, you know, they all went into that new metal thing, but we weren't anything that was either outdated or ahead of our time. So it was difficult to have something new and fresh at such a time where nothing new and fresh was accepted. And um, it worked. And it was a lot of fun, but it was very difficult. And the record company paid us a lot of money to pretty much shut up and be okay with the fact that we're not gonna promote you to these extreme lengths um, rock starness and at the time it was devastating but like in retrospect i'm glad they did that because i'm not a rock star i'm not known as being um this famous rock metal dude that you know uh was played out by the end of the of like 2010 or 11 or 12 or whatever like that so it gave me a chance to to continue to do what I'm doing without people saying, oh God, like that CKY guy is there. Most people don't know what CKY is. So with this music that's new in the same vein as CKY, continuing where CKY left off, I feel like I'm, I have this gift of be a, being able to create new music and sign a new record deal and having new music distributed worldwide where people don't look at me and say, Oh God, what a has been because I was never famous enough to be a has been. Uh, uh, Corey, do you want to jump in here, please? No, I did. I, I do. Cause I had, okay. um, I was reading one of your other interviews and between a uh, campaign and this album, you didn't really stop recording. And it said something like you had recorded something like 50 songs or more that, you know, are just, kind of floating around out there, did it make it really hard to narrow down which ones you wanted on the album? Or do you just kind of have all those other ones waiting in the wings for future albums? Cause you know me, I'm, I don't know if you've watched this show, but I'm like super greedy with stuff that I like. So knowing that there are other songs out there, like I want those, but did it make it really hard to, to narrow it down? <laughs> Well, when I say that we recorded 50 songs, I, I just meant that as kind of a template for saying, okay, we're go I'm going to talk about how many songs we've recorded, but maybe I should uh, say what those songs were. A lot of them were covers. A lot of them were, we had this system set up where fans that were music right, they would add me my song i'm good of a songwriter and musician maybe i'm sending you this demo of a song that you might think is not very good can you make it an awesome song so we did that as part of our our crowdfunding campaign to raise money to buy the equipment that we needed in our studio to make all these albums and all the albums that are to come so i had so much fun getting really, really, um, I don't want to say bad, but crude demos of songs from, from fans had written something and sent them to me. And it was fun to go into the studio and them as they could and send them and have these, have these people like, I can't believe that the song you made it sound like a real song. And those are some of the songs that I'm talking about. Also, uh, like I said, we, we um, told people, send us your songs, we'll record them. Um, send us a song you like, we'll record. Usually cover songs we would get. And then we would do our own cover songs. And all of this having to do with the fundraising campaign that we did for our first albums, we ended up recording 50 songs, including re-recording the entire catalog CKY songs that um, are on all the CKY albums that I thought, 
these can be improved. Plus, I wanted to bring my catalog back to me. That sounds like an amazing and collaborative process. That's what I meant by 50 songs. In fact, if I'm including the, the re-recording. Oh, so fun. So fun. Sorry, I interrupted you. I'll let you let you continue. But that the, just the the notion of you having working that way with all of your fans during that that sounds that's not like your normal crowd funding kind of process. It's that sounds unbelievably fun and and rewarding because it's your fans get to connect with you in a whole completely different way. There's the pool. You know, the best fan support is, you know, somebody saying, and I get this a lot, and I don't want to sound like a martyr or anything. I'm not that, but I get so much um, interaction with fans sending me messages that talk to me about that they're having that they know that I've had, and they want to know, what did you do about it? Whether it's drug addiction, I had a problem with opioids, opioids, opiates at some time, alcohol, being bullied, um, you know, just feeling like an outcast. These are things that I've always been very public about because I don't, I, I need my privacy like everybody else, but my experiences that everybody else and other, a lot of other people can relate to, the, it does not have to be private as far as I'm concerned. I make a lot of the problems that people have public so that either they can have their experience or I can help experience and the idea um we would trade when we were starting to do the fundraising for our albums before we had any uh record company support the idea was really simple and i'm not sure that maybe we were the first band to do this probably not but i instantly became fascinated by the idea okay we we need um new equipment for the studio that we record in and the fans are asking how can we help how can we help so when we did these campaign fundraisers and that's why the first album is called campaign but not c a m p a i g n it's c a m p space p a i n so that's just my cheesy uh, little play on words, but it sends to be like, okay, if you're an aspirer, you're not specifically yet, send us your, the best song you think you've ever written, and I will make it sound the way, hopefully, that you envisioned it in your head when you went for it. And it was it was such a success and it was hopefully it was the, the best original idea that I've ever had in my life. If it is an original idea, nevertheless, I don't care about that. But the fact, the satisfaction that I got from being able to make a crude demo song of, of a fan who was writing songs and, you know, didn't know how to flesh them out. It was really satisfying for me but also them to get a version of the song that they had written that sounded like somebody covered it and loved it and did the best they could and they were blown away and it was it was a trade you know help us out check this out everybody was cool with yeah, that's an amazing way to get everybody involved with it as well. Just like you said, uh, an amazing Sorry. collaborative idea um, on that one. Uh, I uh, real quick before we're we're gonna let you go, I have a, a couple of questions, but uh, I'll try and shorten them down just a little bit, Corey. Uh, otherwise, I imagine that we can talk about music all day. But Darren, you mentioned it just a little bit when you were kind of talking about how the idea with ninety six bitter beings was picking up right where CKY left off, and you know anybody who's listen to campaign and listen to the previous albums knows that's exactly what you did you you have such a distinct voice and such a distinct guitar tone i'm curious that as an artist with that calling card how do you stay both um you know continue that sound but also stay inspired to do things that you haven't done before i 
I try to do things I haven't done before. People always say, you know what, you think you're doing things you haven't done before, but we all know too. And I'm getting into movies. I'm getting into all different kinds. I've always tried to do different kinds of music. I did acoustic out. Al- I did an acoustic album. I did a death metal record for Nuclear Blast w- uh, with my band World Under Blood. I thought that I was completely walking out of my normal routine into a different style of music. And everybody said, you did a death metal record, but we all know it's you. So I guess the answer to that question is I have no choice. I have no other options. I can't try to pretend to be anything else. I can't work outside that box of how I see music to be, any kind of music. And people could say, oh, that's limiting. You know, you know, you don't have, you know, the, you know, uh, the ability to go out and try something new. I'm fine with that because I don't think, and I've been told this, maybe I believe this because of how many times I've been told, but also I think deep down inside, I know that I have this thing that a cult amount, a, a fan know enough about to recognize. And the hardest part about um, having this style that, my fans that that do love what we do recognize is that it's kind of a a kept secret it's not it's not pop it's not uh, wildly successful um even with cky we had this thing in the record company island def jam knew that we were something different they had to sign us because they knew somebody would, and they gave a lot of money to not to be where we to go so it was the record company is paying us to make sure we don't get that gold record and at the time it was like oh well i've always wanted a gold record at the time i was like okay i'm paying my bills i have you know the band has a cult following we set we're selling out shows and there's a certain amount of people that recognize this sound that i have and why should I try to to go outside of it and get away from that and try to to betray this gift that I feel like I've been given in that the fact that people recognize my style of music and how I do things. I'm lucky that you have even that. So I'll stick with it. I'm staying with that. People hear my music and they say if they know who I love music. Death metal, whether I do a rap project, if I did a country album, somehow I would take in style sub would know. So I'm not I would never fight that. I'm going to continue to do what is natural and organic and just go with the flow, do what I love to do and just improve upon it. Fuck yeah. I think that's an amazing answer. And it's got you this far, right? And uh, whether it's, uh, you know, I'm sorry. yeah, uh, uh, like see, uh, Infiltrate and Destroy Rebuild was a formative album for me, just given where I was at. And I can listen to that and then listen to Synergy Restored and be like, yes, same creators in this, but completely different sounds and new and everything like that. You know what I mean? So fuck yeah, I'm, I'm all about that. And I love hearing that you're just like, I know who I am. I'm just going to do this, and that's it. Uh, Corey, did you uh, have a uh, a final or a last question around here? I have the final question, but did you want to ask anything else before I ask the final question? We have Mother of Graves in uh, the green room right now, so I think that you should go ahead with the final all-important question. The final all-important, super important, most important question ever. What is your favorite dinosaur? Oh God! Excellent choice. We do not get that one very often. <laughs> yeah, this is the second week in a row. I know, actually, you no, know very often. You know why? Because I, I love the Stegosaurus. I was so into dinosaurs when I was in elementary school, and everybody, of course, everybody's going to say Tyron, Tyron, 
Tyrannosaurus Rex or, you know, the one with the really long giraffe head, Brontosaurus. The Stegosaurus was talking almost like the mess head, but it had ass tail with these fucking spikes on it. So it had the, ch- it had the choice to either be calm and collected or threatening and unexpected in its defense. Like anything that would attack a stegosaurus had no idea that one whip of that tail and they were going to have that, you know, completely done with, you know, Tyrannosaurus Rex was probably very arrogant, you know, whatever I want. If he had a stegosaurus, maybe look, the Tyrannosaurus looking down at the stake. Like, that's an easy target. I'm going to go for that. Tail whips around and smashes it. I like any kind of creatures that have the ability to be friendly and lovable when they know they should be and when they're being treated that way. And then when it comes time to say, okay, fucking bring it on, all they got to do is whip that fucking tail. And that's exactly what I used to think in first grade when I was being taught about dinosaurs. Fuck yeah. I think back to Fantasia, the scene with the (laughs) Tyrannosaurus Rex fighting the Stegosaurus is like a formative piece of entertainment for me. The amount of times that I wore out that tape, Corey, watching that dinosaur scene in Fantasia, uh, I could go on all day about it. It is an excellent scene. It is an excellent, it's an excellent choice. (laughs) I love, I love, I love, any kind of domestic animals that are neither predator nor prey, but can be both. Because it's the kind of vulnerability that all human beings have, you know, when they're forced into a situation where they need to be defensive and aggressive, they, you know, we can, we can also be vulnerable and can be, um, because we're, but we have the option predator, um, most of the other dinosaurs were just prey, but the stegosaurus you fuck with. <laughs> Words to live by everybody. Darren, thank you so much for taking time out of your day, for being able to connect on here and chat with us about the album. Everybody, <laughs> Synergy Restored by 96 Bitter Beings is out November 4th via Nuclear Blast. Many, many years in the making, so make sure you go pick it up. Give Darren some love, and hey, listen to some kick-ass music. Darren, thank you so much for joining us today on Pulse of the Maggots. Thanks you. Thank you for having me, and thank you for being patient about how difficult this whole thing has been. Hey, as far as us, we know. Yeah, and we reschedules, know, I appreciate you guys coming back and um, making this happen. Yep, absolutely. Well, have a great rest of the week, my friend. Congratulations on the thank album. You all. Lots of hard work goes into that, and uh, we'll probably see it around here again in the time. Who knows? Thank Who you. knows when? Soon, I hope. 